in the producer price index, it was interesting that the things that were the most expensive uh, that showed up, furniture, uh, uh, goods, gas, um, you know, things like that were um, uh, used cars. They were, they were all, people weren't buying them in the retail sales, excuse me, retail sales. People are not paying for cars, furniture, and even kind of curbing demand on gas. Get ready for a new episode of KP Talks Dollars and Cents. Learn financial literacy and get real-time updates on all things housing, finance, and real estate. So let's get started. Here's your host, Kevin Perenio. Hey, it's KP coming to you live from Del Mar. Check this out. It is a full-blown sunset course. Just when I want to pinch and zoom. Can't. We're getting the sunset here at Del Mar. Moon is out. I'm on a family vacation, but for those of you in the business know, there's absolutely no vacation. There's no such thing. I try. I tried really hard. Anyway, uh, kind of a slow news week. Happy Thanksgiving. If um, I don't get our, if you don't get my video until uh, Thursday night, I'm, I plan on maybe taking uh, a Thursday or Friday video out this week. Uh, but it is absolutely beautiful out here. Love for you to get one last glimpse of this before I get into the light news of the week. Look at that. Gorgeous. Those are surfers. Anyway, um, so what's the news of the week? What's going on? Uh, bank of America is like the fourth largest bank in the world, second biggest bank in America. Quietly, quietly in their earnings report, are reporting larger and larger unrealized losses. It's very interesting to kind of watch that. Um, the largest unreported, excuse me, unrealized loss ever reported on a quarterly earnings report by a bank in the U.S. ever. Now, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with Bank of America. Um, it's just interesting that as we talk about the stress of the financial system, we talk about rising interest rates what does it mean for the financial system is there going to be a another bank crisis i i don't know um bank of america is certainly flush with cash and tons of reserves but it was just a very interesting uh note that i read in one of my subscriptions uh today by the way here's a train I mean, how about that train ride? You're going down the coast at sunset? Freaking sign me up. I don't know where they work. Not schlepping in our business. Anyway, um, I thought that was that was noteworthy because uh, as we talk about whether the Fed is going to, if they're done or if they're even going to do one more raise or what they're going to do, the stress of the financial system is something that's talked about. And that is certainly stress on a bank potentially remember it's unrealized right so let's say like you know um you talk about treasuries or you talk about mortgage-backed securities you have what's called held for maturity or mark to market and we're just going to quick, quick refresher on the difference so if i take out a 30-year treasury and i hold it all 30 years just getting my uh interest payments every uh i guess it's every uh twice a year i believe on 30-year bonds do that accordingly i forgot um, then it doesn't matter if the price that I paid for the asset goes up or down because I'm never selling it. I'm quote, holding it for maturity. But if I market to market, that means I have to sell it. Well, obviously a lot of, a lot of treasuries on people's balance sheets are worth a lot less than when they bought them. I'll give you an example. So, um, you know, back in March when there were runs on banks, those banks had to raise funds to offset assets leaving the banks because the depositors were leaving uh the pulling their money out so in order to say okay i have less assets to offset my li liabilities i need to sell some treasuries well you're selling treasuries you're marking it to market what's the going price and when you're forced to market or you have to market and they're worth a lot less you lose money so it's like a double whammy that's where banks implode that's how Lenders imploded back in 06, 07, 08. So are we going to see some implosion, some more implosions uh, when securities are marked to market? Um, so an unrealized loss is not marked to market. You haven't realized it. 
Um, maybe they're reserving for credit card losses or um, who knows what they're doing. And I, I didn't really dig into the balance sheet. I just read, um, just read a note about it. Uh, I'm out here with my family. I think they're over here somewhere. This place is pretty freaking cool. Look at this. Little greenscape. Um, the, the FHA insurance fund came out with their um, yearly report. And they're still well capitalized. Even after cutting the monthly MIP fee, the mortgage insurance uh, payment, and um, the upfront, um, they're still funded very well, which is great. That means defaults aren't aren't showing up yet. Realized losses are not showing up yet. So uh, existing home sales comes out this week. Um, leading economic indicators um, from the conference board came out today, still showing negative uh, leading economic indicators in general, which is usually a precursor to a recession. Remember the longest recession we've ever talked about that still hasn't happened yet. I, I, will, I will contest and I think it will go down on record that that last two years was the soft landing since We've been talking about high interest rates, uh, savings going away, credit cards, defaulting, loans, blah, 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 and then still didn't happen. So um, I think the soft landing is over, and we're going to talk about how hard will the landing get from here. Um, so anyway, um, the only other thing I think it's worth bringing up is um, in the producer price index, it was interesting that the things that were the most expensive uh, that showed up, furniture... Uh, uh, goods, gas, um, you know, things like that were, um, uh, used cars. They were, they were all, people weren't buying them in the retail sales, excuse me, retail sales. People are not paying for cars, furniture, and even kind of curbing demand on gas. So the retail sales number was actually down compared to expectations for the first time since March. So anyway, as we cruise into Thanksgiving and you guys enjoy this beautiful scenery and I'm here working on vacation. Hope you enjoy a great time with your family. It's the best holiday of the year. Uh, we'll get back to some more actual news maybe later this week or even next week. Cheers. You've been listening to KP Talks Dollars and Cents, a top-rated show for those who want to learn about the economy and mortgage environment. Tune in each week for more episodes and please leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Kevin Perenio does not render or offer to render personalized investment or tax advice through KP Talks Dollars and Cents. The information provided is for informational purposes only and does not constitute financial, tax, investment, or legal advice. For more info, follow KP Talks Dollars and Cents on all of our social channels.